Welcome to this training tip showing how to simplify tool selection during CAM programming for CNC machines using job kits. It may be easiest to understand the concept of CAM system tool databases and the role of job kits by first considering how tool selection is done in the real world and then compare this to the virtual world of CAM software. The tool crib is the central place in the machine shop where all the tooling used for CNC machining is available. This is represented in EdgeCAM by the tool store application, which is the database where all the tools available to the CAM user are stored. When we are putting together a new CNC machine setup, tool selection is often part of the manufacturer and engineering process. Let's go back to the real world for a moment and consider the scenario where a new CNC programmer is tasked with choosing the tools for the CAM programming. What if we went to the company tool crib each time we selected a tool? We would have access to every tool the company owns, but may have significant work required to select the best tool for the machining application, build tool assemblies with the proper holders and related items, and assign tool positions. While this may not be a problem for the experienced user, a less experienced CNC programmer will not consistently choose the best tool. Regardless of whether the most practical tool is selected on the first attempt, the process will be time consuming. What if the CNC programmer started tool selection with a specific group of recommended tooling? Perhaps these are tools already in the CNC machine turret or tool change magazine, or the preferred tools for a typical machining setup or part family. In this scenario, it would be much simpler to select tools in most cases, since there is a smaller amount of tooling to choose from. Obviously, the programmer will still need flexibility to grab tools from the tool crib when there is not a suitable tool in the pre-selected tooling group, and EdgeCam will allow that to happen as well. In the same way, job kits represent the preferred tools to use for a machining setup. For example, the job kit, also called a tool kit, could represent the typical tools in a lathe turret or machine tool magazine. EdgeCam's tool store database is a single database system that has many related roles. At its core, the database acts as a virtual tool crib to store all the tools available for CNC machining within the company. Tools can also be grouped into job kits for tool organization purposes. Tools can be paired with cutting data, making it possible to automatically determine accurate machining data such as cutting feeds and spindle speeds. EdgeCam Workflow has added ability to store commonly used stock, fixtures, and CNC machines in the database. The point is that all of this valuable data, often unique to each software user, is stored in a single database, which is called the Tool Store. The Toolkit Assistant is the software application used to manage job kits, which are also called toolkits. This software application in the EdgeCam suite allows users to create and edit job kits and also manage the tool records in the virtual tool crib. The Tool Store database's job kits have a two-way street with EdgeCam during the programming process. This training tip focuses on how job kits simplify tool selection within EdgeCam and speed up the programming process. We want to point out that the job kits can also collect the tools used in EdgeCam for setup reporting purposes. This information could be used internally within the engineering department or shared with others using EdgeCam's live job reports. When a job kit is used in EdgeCam workflow, the CAM process can become highly efficient. The job kit technology is productive for users that build toolpath manually, primarily by reducing the effort needed to select tools. The benefits become even more significant when Toolpath is automatically applied to solid model features using EdgeCam Workflow's planning board and machine feature software technologies. Let's explore how to manage job kits using Toolkit Assistant. The Toolkit Assistant displays the tools in your tool store on the right side and job kits that have been created on the left side. To create a new job kit, I simply right click in the jobs area and choose create. Next we'll assign a description. It's possible to put job kits into families for organization. 
To create a family, simply type the name that you wish to have for a family if there's not already an existing family in the list. I've typed a family name called Example, and after pressing OK, we're going to have a new tab added called Example that this job kit will be part of. If you're intending the job kit to capture the standard tools used in a machine tool magazine or turret, you'll want to make sure to browse for the post processor that this toolkit's intended to be used with. And since this represents a job kit of standard tools that we want the programmer to use as a first choice collection of tools, make sure that the pre-selected tooling option is checked. When we look at how job kits are used with EdgeCam programs, you'll see how this influences helping the user select tools in here as a first choice with the ability to step into the entire tool crib and pick other suitable tools if necessary. After pressing OK, notice that we have a new tab added called Example, where all the job kits inside that family are displayed. Next, we need to add tools to the toolkit. So I'm going to start with a face mill. And I'm going to select a face mill from my tool list and click and hold the left mouse button down and drag it on top of the job kit and then release the left mouse button. And when I do that, I have ability to now provide some unique information about the tool properties when this tool is used in that job kit. In this case, I'm simply going to assign tool position. But notice that I can change anything else in these boxes that I would like, including the comment. I can add a different holder if I want to, or extensions. I can even change the cutting technology used for this tool. When I press OK, I have just added this tool to the job. Let's go into end mills next, and I want to add a one half inch end mill into that job kit. We'll say that this is station number two, and then I'll add a uh, three quarter inch end mill as station number three. So I now have three different tools in that job kit. One way to look at the tools in that job kit is to click the cross filter button. When I click this button, what happens now is the job kit that's selected here, we're displaying all the tools within the filtering criteria that's laid out here. So I can see that I have a half inch, a three quarter inch, and a two inch face mill. In order to edit the tool data in here, I can right click over the tool record that I want to modify and go into toolkit data and edit. Don't confuse editing the toolkit data with editing the tool. For example, if I go to toolkit data and edit, I can change things like the turret position, the comment, or other fields. If I edit the tool itself, I'm editing the physical tool record in the database and could change, for example, its flute length or number of teeth or other criteria. To demonstrate that that tool is simply linked to the kit, notice the jobs area. When this tool is in the all kit jobs configuration, which means it's simply a tool in the tool crib, it does not have a turret position assigned yet. That happens when it's actually placed in a job kit. In the example one job kit, this is turret position 13. If I decide to change that to 14 and press OK, that change is immediately transferred to the job kit, and I can see that when I edit the toolkit data. This is now tool 14. That demonstrates that the tool records in the database are linked through to the job kit. Similarly to editing, you want to be careful about delete. If you choose delete from the menu, this is going to physically delete the tool record from the database. It would be similar to taking that tool and removing that tool from your company throwing the tool away, we're never going to use that tool again. If you intend to simply remove the tool from the tool kit, you'd be better off to go to toolkit data and remove. And when I remove this tool from the tool kit, I've simply taken the tool out of the tool kit, but the tool record itself still exists in the tool database. Another way of looking at that is if I edit the tool kit and look at tooling, I can see that I now only have two tools in that tool kit and not three. Now that we've explained how to manage job kits, let's go look at how to use them within EdgeCam. We have a part open in EdgeCam workflow that's been prepared for machining. Stock's been created using the casting of the part, and we're going to be doing some turning operations on it. 
We're going to begin by creating a sequence and the first page of the Create Turning Sequence dialog allows us to select a machine tool and then the, the toolkit. Let's explain some things related to toolkits while we're on this page. First of all, notice that there's only one job kit selected because the Filter Toolkits by Machine option is checked. That means that when I pick this post processor, only job kits that have that post processor selected in them are shown. If I turn this off, then I can see every job kit in my database grouped by family. So I can see the example one kit we created earlier, as well as other job kits that could be available and choose one of them. Another thing we want to display or point out is that at the top of the box it says flange.1. If you click Next, you will have a job kit created called Flange.1, and that would be created for the task of setup report purposes. The reason for the name Flange.1 is that the name of the part is called Flange, and so the job kit matches that with a dot one suffix. If you do not intend to use any job kit at all, make sure to backspace over this and leave this blank before clicking Next. In this case, we're going to use the toolkit that represents the standard tools already available to our turret. So when I left click to choose that, the name of the job kit to be created will be the name of that job kit with a dot one suffix. The reason for the copy indicated by the dot one suffix is that this is a master job kit and I don't want to alter the tools in it for a particular setup. Now if you had, rather than making a copy of a master job kit, you simply had pre-collected tools up front before programming and intend to use them, Notice the padlock, where you can unlock the padlock and work directly in that job kit rather than on a copy of it. When I click Next, we'll put in the part stick out that we wish to use for this. And then in the final summary screen, we're going to put in the grip diameter that we wish to use for this since we'll be grabbing back on the back shoulder of the part rather than on the major diameter. Now I want to point out that the selected toolkit that's shown in the summary screen, it is possible to edit that by using the edit button and this edit toolkit will bring you to the toolkit where you could change the name of it if you needed to or other components. When I select OK, the sequence is created and is paired to the job kit. We can see that because when we edit the sequence and go to the job data page, the job kit that we've selected to be used is listed as the job name. Let's see how that influences tool selection in EdgeCam. When I go to machine feature and use the roughing, and turn off the stock display, and grab that external turn feature, the results are that EdgeCam selects a tool within the job kit as a first choice tool, and because of that, the 55 degree general turn tool that's selected is tool station number two. Workflow has picked a tool already in the machine turret as the best choice tool to use for roughing. What happens if we edit the job kit, remove the job data, and force the software to have to make a tool selection not based on tools in the machine turret, but based on all the tools in the tool crib? The results now are that the software has picked a 55 degree cutter. It's not the same tool that we had before though. But more importantly, the software doesn't know what turret station that should be. This would require that I need to check every tool that's built as the user, possibly picking a different cutter from the tool store, and always assigning a tool position and potentially other factors. Let's look at that another way. If I was to select a tool directly from Tool Store myself and no job kit is used, notice that I have to work within the existing filters looking at every single tool in my virtual tool crib to choose the right tool. If I'm doing manual programming, I may not feel that that's a big deal, but once I pick a tool, then I have to make sure to assign a turret position and possibly other factors that realistically are things that we already know. If rather than looking at the every tool in the tool store and manually picking tools, we use a job kit, this process will be simplified. So if I go back and relink the setup back to the job kit that we were using, 
and now go work to manually pick a tool. Notice that I only have a handful of tools displayed. If I go choose the subcategory of turning tools, I now only see two. That's because, due to the pre-selected tooling checkbox in the job kit that we showed earlier, the tool filters are set up to look for tools within the job kit, as well as any other filters applied. And that way, when I go pick the 55 degree cutter, EdgeCam already knows not only that it's a tool in the machine magazine, but it's tool number two. Great, that's excellent. And then I can continue programming. Now, if there is a situation where we want to bypass the tools in the, in the tools kit because there's not a suitable tool there, we have ability to click on the tools button, delete the job from the filter, press OK, and I'm now looking at all the tools in my virtual tool crib, and if I go decide to go get a different tool, such as this 35 degree finish turn tool, I've grabbed a different tool from the tool crib for use in this setup, and I simply have to make sure to assign it a suitable tool position. Let's look at how this is a time saver. When I go back to the machine feature command, and to simplify, we're going to turn off the advanced toolbar so that we're just looking at the technology that workflow adds into EdgeCam. The machine feature command allows workflow strategies to make automatic machining decisions based on the features available and the tools in our database. And the decision here is to go look in the tool crib just like we did and try to choose a tool already in the job kit as a tool that can be used. So this means that I have a high degree of likelihood to choose the tool that I intend to use even using the automated machining processes. And that means that I have a reduced amount of editing that I will need to do once the tool path has been built. This is a huge time saver. The final portion of the demonstration compared selecting tools from the entire virtual tool crib to simply using a suitable tool already in the CNC machine. In addition to speeding up tool selection, the job kit allows users to alter specific tool and information unique to the machining setup without impacting the general tool information stored in the virtual tool crib. Effective use of EdgeCam's job kit software technology will reduce the effort required to select tooling. Job kits are also a critical component in allowing users to leverage the potential of EdgeCam Workflow's planning board and machine feature software technologies. This is just one of the areas where EdgeCam Workflow makes you more productive compared to the traditional approach to CAM.